Guys, what is going on, baby? Welcome back to another The Arsenio Buck Show podcast. So you know what? I'm your host at the break of dawn after a half bottle of red wine with some chats and some music and just looking and observing people out here in Singapore. Man, I am all over the place this morning. But you know what, man? I got to go over some real stuff. All right, and you know what? This is a live episode because you know what? Yesterday, whoo, boy, you guys gonna go. Oh, I got another pod, another traveling podcast coming up real soon, so just stay tuned for that. But guys, we are into something that's very important. And big shout out to my man Matthew uh, Pike. I actually had him on Motivational Mentors, and he saw my video and he was like, "Oh my god, man, this was so useful for me because you know, in terms of sales." And this is what happened to me uh, last Thursday. This is something that I've been telling you guys that I wanted to talk about. Something that I posted on my Instagram for some of you. And you know what? This is everything not to do in sales. So let's just put it this way. All right. Let me just paint the picture. All right. Uh, let's say I want to be an uh, ex-colleague of mine, okay? She used to be the sales over there at uh, the last, oh my God, just two years ago. The job I used to work for for three and a half years in a very toxic environment. There you go. And she ended up leaving because, of course, one guy, you know, blah, blah, blah. who gives a damn? Okay, so she was like, hey, Arsenio, I'm just going to take all the shenanigans out. She's like, hey, Arsenio, can you come with me to an interview? And I said, deal. So we went to this place. I'm like, oh, my God. Okay, this is going to be real, real good Um, just because this is a place that I've always wanted to work at. So she's like, yeah, we need to give a presentation. So I'm thinking I was going to give the presentation. So then we go to this place, we go up to the floors, not much of a welcome, not much of a hello and whatnot. We go into a room, she starts getting all set up, and I'm like, oh, you're going to give a presentation? And she's like, yeah. So then the four women walked in, and normally, listen, guys, rule number one, when you're meeting potential clients for the first time, you must shake hands with them. So me, I'm like, hello, and they didn't even want to like shake hands or anything. And I'm like, okay, this is weird. They didn't even introduce themselves. They didn't even say their names. I'm like, okay, what are your names? Nothing. And I'm like, okay, this is weird. This is really weird. And then, of course, you had the lady that I came with. She wasn't saying, hey, guys, listen, my name's, you know, Nuke. Pleasure meeting you guys. And we didn't get back down to brass tacks. For you, this is trust tip number two. This is number two, okay? You need to be the listener when you are dealing with clients. Fuck your track record. Okay, fuck everything you do. No one cares about what you do. Okay, Uh, and again, you're going to have to communicate what you do effectively and without like having that brashness to it, right? You don't want to have that ego bearing down on what you're trying to communicate in terms of your track record after they ask you about it. Because if they ask you, okay, so what is it you do? So here she is giving this PowerPoint presentation, 15 minutes. One lady begins to get irritated. She becomes disengaged. She starts looking left, right, left, right. She starts talking, very, you know, whispering to the people next to her. And I'm like, oh, boy. I'm like, P. Nuke, you're you're starting to look. You're you're missing these people now. And she doesn't realize it. She's just talking blah, 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 without getting any feedback. She's going over, okay, we do this, oh, the IELTS, this TOEIC, and this and that. They don't give a fuck about you, your language center, what you do, the TOEIC, the IELTS. It's about business. What can you give to these people? The value you can bring. And so I'm like, man, I'm going to have to save the day. I don't know how, but Arsenio, just, you know, just take a step back and see if you can save this day. And so finally the presentation ends. This lady I'm sitting across, she looks like the main lady because you have like two Gen, uh, what is it, Gen, uh, Gen Zs on the end, right? Some youngsters. You have a lady with the mask on. She's like in the Gen X area. And then you had like the main lady in the Gen X area. The main lady in the Gen X area, she was the one that was disengaged. And she was just like just shoulder shrugging and not giving a damn. She was grabbing her phone as if the presentation was over. That was it. And she was going to move on to the next one. And I'm like, ah, guys, keep in mind. My friend before this, before this, she was like, I haven't been getting clients much. It's really difficult. And guess what? After seeing that presentation, I absolutely understand why. When you first get no, uh, they need to speak. They don't care about this, that, or anything your language center does or anything you do that doesn't relate to them. They want to know what you can do for them. So instead of giving a 15-minute bullshit-ass presentation, you could have sat down and said, guys, this is what we provide. 
Now, I'm going to get, and the thing is, she gave too much material. They were just like trying to get through all these papers. Okay, they were going right, they were going left. They were like, huh, what page, what page, what page? Guys, the more material, the more overwhelmed. The more overwhelmed, the more disengaged they become. Keep it, keep it simple. It's kind of like putting a whole bunch of font on a PowerPoint presentation. They're going to just look at the PowerPoint presentation rather than listening to you. <clears throat> so what ended up happening was at the end, I'm like, oh, my God. And then, you, you know, I'm kind of like just trying to jump in and whatnot. But they're not even making eye contact with me. They're not even asking me questions. But then finally, the girl that I came with, she referred me over to them so I could open up. And I'm like, guys, what are the outcomes? What is it that you want to achieve in this workshop? Okay, we have. They, they, I saw that there was a presentation workshop. There was this workshop. There was that workshop. However, you put a whole bunch of writing in terms of what you do for a workshop, but that doesn't relate to what they do. So, okay, I understand. You wanted to give books. You wanted to give this. You wanted to give that. They're not going to look through any of that. They don't care about any of that. They want to know how you can help their employees and make their life easier. That's the product that you're selling. And so I started to talk to them, and then they started to open up. They started to smile. I'm like, okay, what's the number one problem that you have right now here at this company in terms of English language? She's like, okay, complaint emails. We get a lot of this. We get a lot of this. It goes down this way. And then next, you know, I started breaking it down in like micro steps. And then they started opening up even more like, oh, yeah, this. And then the, the, the Gen Zs, they were like this and that and this and that. And I'm like, okay, so over here, there's a little lack of communication here. Okay, and so when it comes down all the way down to it and then the, the, the severity of the situation become, you know grows and grows and grows, it comes to you and then you have to handle it. Okay, in Thai culture, they had a hard language rather than soft language. Foreigners like soft language. They're not able to respond to different requests. They're not able to apologize. Okay, now. I understand what you guys need. Now what you have to do, you have to get information for me. You have to ask every little detail in terms of every employee that's dealing with the specific area that needs help. And then you can send that in bullet point reference to me. And then from there, I can create a full-blown, of course, template for all of you. And then from there, you could say, oh, my God, OK, this is what we need. This is what we need. This is what we need. This is what. Oh, my God. Thank you so much. Because my goal is to make your life easier. If I cannot make your life easier, then what is the point of doing this workshop? And then I remember at the very end, <clears throat> the Gen X lady, she was like, oh, well, you know what? Uh, yeah, we were looking at this template and uh, a lot of this stuff doesn't relate to us. I was like, yeah. And I'm, and I'm saying to myself, I'm like, <clears throat> Pinook, why did you actually write all this on there? Why did you do it? Because if you did that specific thing, guess what? They're going to look at it and say, oh, these are the only services you provide, but none of this relates to us. Therefore, we're not going to accept your services. Duh. Now, instead of making something in terms of workshop, you could have put, okay, so these are all the things that we cover and can cover, and we can add on to that. So then they could browse through the list of things. They could highlight the things they need, and then they could add on. That makes it easier. You see what I mean? It's kind of like when I dealt with my first ever client. It was pure gold. So I'm sitting there, and I'm talking to this guy. I'm like, David, what do you need from me? He's like, okay, well, I got problem with small talk. Okay, taking messages, taking notes. Okay, telephone calls, soft language, uh, and especially referring like different things that we could do more. So let me give you an example. If someone calls and says, hey, do you have parking there? And you have a lady that says, no, we don't have. Guess what? There's no follow-up solution. If you don't have parking and if you just say, no, we don't have without providing a solution, that's poor customer service. That's number one. Number two, guess what? They're going to hang up and they're going to say, well, fuck you guys. You don't deserve my money if you're going to give me that service. This is why so many Thai, so many Thai companies fell miserably in this area because there always needs to be a but. Now, remember I told you about that, that ultimate service that uh, the African-American gave me in terms of buying a peacoat. This is like 500 million years ago. 
I remember I called and I was like, hey, man, how you doing? You know what? I saw that you have this item. Da, 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 da. Do you have this? Next thing you know, he's like, oh, okay. Okay, now let me ask you this. Okay, does it have this? Okay, let me ask you this. Okay. And it was so funny. It was such an interactive, ex- you know, uh, what was it? Telephone call. And I knew that he was one of my own because he always, he kept saying over and over, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. So I went there and I looked and of course African American he looked at me he was like you the guy from the telephone huh money and that was the most gorgeous coat I've ever had in my life guys providing a little more and guess what this refers back to Napoleon Hills the law of doing more than what you're paid for establishes the law of increasing returns see I haven't heard anything back from the uh from of course my friend you know in terms of that and i will be utterly shocked if they end up do get in that specific bank as a client now me i put shit together i'm a beast that's who i am i know it because i'm an accelerated english training coach that's what i am okay and this is by you know doing things on my pot you know on my podcast of course that's going ridiculously massive right now And this is what I want to do all around the Asian seaboard. I want to go to Dubai, Hong Kong, and Japan to help with companies' needs. And this is why I'm creating so much content. However, there are a lot of people out there, they don't understand the essence of listening. And this is how people lose clients. I saved my friend that day from what could have been an absolute disaster. I could have given her feedback. Right. And I wrote down so many notes. You know what? Let me see if I can pull that up. You know, I don't even think it's saved because my my, my freaking Microsoft Word is. Yep. See, I knew it's a piece of shit. Anyways, I wrote down a lot of a lot of notes and I was going to tell her. But if she would have asked me, AJ, what do you think? Of course, my nickname's AJ. I would have been like, listen, what we could have done. Fuck the presentation. Go in there and say, guys, this is who we are. I got my teacher right here. Let's have a God honest talk. What do you guys need from us? Okay, you need this. And then the follow up questions are the most important aspects of everything. Because then you go deeper into what they need and you go even further down that rabbit hole. And then they begin to open up more. And then next thing you know, they start getting ideas like, oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. And then they look at their friend. They start speaking in Thai. And then they're shaking their head, smiling like, oh, my God. Yeah, 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 yeah. Boom. You got them. You got them. And this is why I'm beginning to be the GOAT. And you know what? You know what's so funny? I'm just going to give this to you guys. And then I'm going to give you some trust tips. All right? <sighs> And I actually wrote this on the blog too if you guys want to see this in writing. But there was a guy that used to be the marketing director of a job a long time ago. My friend, she saw him at a place somewhere in Bangkok. There were like five people vying for this specific contract. She didn't get it. He got it. So what does he do so well? And this is a guy that has gotten a numerous amount of contracts. Now, it's very difficult for a marketing director to get something to get a project, but to not get the results. So they shored the values, you know, the three capabilities, right? You got the capabilities, you know, you establish some trust, but he's not able to deliver the results. Why? Because he only has teachers. He doesn't have like English training or like consultants and stuff like that. So he goes there, he sells them the idea, he gets it, but the follow-up is not that good because of course these companies don't come back. And I've been there. I've worked for the SCG, which is like the Siam Cement, one of the biggest companies in Thailand. Email workshop. Everyone was disengaged. It was too academic. And guess what? They never got one again. And I remember I was supposed to do a presentation. I was supposed to do this. I was supposed to do that. And the next thing you know, there was no collaboration. I was trying to get things done. And they were like, oh, no, this, that. And I'm like, you know what? Fuck y'all. How about I do my own thing? That was three years ago. Never got a project with them again. Why? Because I said no. Because you guys don't know what the hell you're doing. And I would like to do this on my own. See what I mean? So what it comes down to, ask yourself, how can you improve? I'm like, hey, Nuke, do you feel that you're improving? Ah, to a certain extent, yeah. Do you like this? Yeah. How can you get better? And this is where people fail. 
Because you know what? She probably went back home, went back to her job and continued doing the same thing rather than just sitting there pondering and saying, you know what? How did that go wrong? What did I do wrong? Maybe I just spoke too much. Maybe they were disengaged from the beginning rather than being engaged. There it is. Guys, trust trust tips. Here we go. Reach in the sweet spot, which I did. It takes integrity, right? The honesty, the, 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 that courageousness within me to just straight up ask and say, hey, what is it that you need? And you know what? It set the expectations. It's like, okay, you need this, you need this, you need this. Okay, now you send that to me, send all the information, then I could send you the entire thing back and then you'll see everything. And she'd be like, oh, okay. See, it takes intent to create those expectations, And it has to provide a win-win. The other thing that she did wrong was at the very end, without asking any questions, she gave them the quote. She gave them the price quote. So they're looking at the price. Number one, they're like, look, you're probably not even going to give us the results. And you're you're showing us this money? Really? Ultimate problem. That's the biggest problem. You know what? When I went to a UOB... Uh, Singaporean bank I went to an interview and I was seeing if I could provide service and you know training to these people and they're like oh well we have like a business workshop or this or that and I'm like ah, oh, you know I really thought I was gonna be the person that could like go around you know I'm kind of this was kind of like misleading she's like oh can you do like you know English camps I'm like man fuck I ain't it the hell no that was like five years ago I don't do English camps all right I work for big corporations that's what I do all right, I help companies excel in areas that they are defeated in, and that's hurting the company overall in terms of English language training or personal development. And so, yes, that one went to shit. But going forward, I'm like, okay, so what went wrong there? Oh, well, basically, I'm going to be battling up against some of the biggest people there. I can't really show my capabilities. I can only speak the results, the this, the that. Of course, everything just died right then and there. And I'm like, yeah, whatever. Email them. I said, hey, I'll get that thing to you uh, later on. They never email me back. And luckily, I never did anything because after that, I was just dejected. I was like, yeah, hey, it's not going to work. On to the next. There it is. And guess what? That ended up being the most successful 48 hours following that of my podcast career, both of them. And then now, of course, now what's happening right now. So again, getting back to this, guys, win-win. It's got to be win-win. If it's win-lose, the loss is for the client, of course. My friend, 15-minute presentation, disengaged employees, people sitting there, gave them the quote list. It looks like it's a win for her and it's a loss for them. They're going to pay all this money and then they're gonna, they're not even going to get the results that they are aiming for. I will be shocked if they get back in touch with her. A straight up. See, guys, it takes the capabilities, especially the ability to organize the elements of that agreement, to set up the accountability and execute that with excellence. You need the te- you need the trainers, not just teachers. A teacher is someone who opens up a book and teaches right out of the bullshit ass book. You need a trainer that focuses on the core individual, the core values. Of a specific person in need. And it takes the ability to identify the desired results in a way that everyone involved understands. That's what I did. See, when I began to communicate with them, see, I we we established the clarity, right? Okay, this is what you want, not what on the paper. Yes, okay, we got the clarity now. And one way to check to see if the communication is there and everything. These are some simple questions. I'll give you four of them. Number one, what have you understood from the conversation? That's what I understood. My friend, she didn't understand anything, but I understood everything because of course I'm the coach. Number two, as a result of the interaction, what do you see as your next steps? I outlined it. So I was like, hey, listen, all right. I understand what you need. Now I need help from you. I wasn't talking to my friend at that time because she works for another place, but I don't work for them. I'm just a freelance. So I'm like, okay, you need to ask your employees everything. You need to send everything to me. Then I could create a customized workshop catering to you guys. I could send it to you. You could look at it. Then we could proceed. Then she's like, okay. So I outlined all the steps. Number three, do you feel that others are clear regarding expectations? I do believe that. I don't believe that they asked all the questions because they seemed very turned off from the presentation and we didn't establish the openness from the beginning. Number four, what can you do to make things more clear? Well, it's on her end now. 
remember, I'm just a freelance. I'm surprised they didn't try getting in contact with me after that, saying, listen, what you were saying, that was music to our ears. But what she was saying, that was just noise. See, the next time you guys have some kind of project at work, or whatever it may be, even at home, whatever you want to call it, just create a clear agreement from the beginning. Say, hey, listen, we're going to agree on this. I'm here to help you. What is it you need? Okay, let's break everything down in micro. Okay, now the next steps are, okay, then after you send that to me, I can customize it, send it back to you, create a date. Let's get this show on a roll. See, if you're in charge, like her, call everyone together, okay, encourage them to express their ideas from the beginning. Don't give a bullshit-ass presentation or whatever you want to call it at the beginning. Because now they're not able to express themselves and now they feel that, oh my God, well, this is nothing that we need. This is not relatable to us. Boom. They're finished. They're out the door. Their mind's already gone, just like that lady. And then you got to set up something, some kind of agreement that represents a win for all stakeholders on both sides. See, my friend didn't establish that. I established that probably at about a 70% range. But by that time, this lady was already out the door, but then she started opening up and then it seemed like I got them back because of what I was saying, because they're like, okay, this guy's legit. We don't know what the hell she doing, but you know what? Can we trust this place or should we go to another one? There it is, guys. This was such a unique experience. I'm so glad I was able to go through this and of course... You know, deal with this because now you guys are able to say, oh my God, man, this is something I can absolutely use right off the back. And I do hope that a lot of you do do that because, man, what I saw that Thursday, I was like, it was exciting because it got me so excited in terms of, wow, okay, so I don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. Had to t- I had to speak about it. Did a one minute, what is it, a 10 minute video on LinkedIn. Was it long enough? Here's the long one right here. So guys, man, I hope you actually do listen to this and do take this into account. All the steps and everything in writing is on my blog, which is going to post just shortly after this. And thank you so much for tuning in to another The Arsenio Buck Show podcast. Guys, we're getting into the next behavior in the next one. Yes, it will be coming out as scheduled tomorrow. So stay tuned for that. And as always, have a wonderful morning, afternoon, and evening. I'm your host, as always, over and out.